Uh, good afternoon. My name is Eric Cardall, and I represent the petitioners in a lawsuit filed about 20 minutes ago in Hennepin County District Court. The petitioners include Pro-Life Action Ministries, its executive director, Brian Gibson, and Bridget Busacker, a graduate student at the University of Minnesota. Uh, this is an historic day. Uh, I can't tell you how pleased I am that these uh, petitioners have worked together to bring this uh, lawsuit in the Hennepin County District Court. The form of the lawsuit is a petition for writ of quo warranto. It's a, a, an old writ that's been around a long time and been used successfully uh, in recent court actions against the Secretary of State and uh, various other governmental entities around the state of Minnesota. So the petition basically says to the Hennepin County District Court, by what authority does the University of Minnesota violate Minnesota's law prohibiting transplantation research on the fetal remains of aborted fetuses? Uh, Pro-Life in Action Ministry and Mr. Gibson back in the late 1980s uh, accomplished getting a law enacted to make sure that there was a dignified disposal of the fetal remains from abortions. And it, that, that dignified uh, uh, ceremony, that, dig that dignity of a burial or cremation prohibited transplantation research. So here you have a law in the books. Uh, Planned Parenthood filed a very publicly uh, noticed lawsuit to find this uh, statute unconstitutional. The U.S. Court of Appeals 3-0 back in the early 1990s found that this statute was indeed constitutional. So this is a vetted state statute and here we have the University of Minnesota, our pride and joy, driven to discover, all that stuff, and yet that state university which has a law school is openly and notoriously violating the law. What a harm to us as a people that our laws can't even be followed by our university. This is a scandal of, of great importance. It's a scandal because we expect the University of Minnesota to follow the laws just like all of us little people are expected to follow the laws. So how did this happen? How did, this, how did it come to this lawsuit? Well, last fall, as many uh, in the press noted, uh, there were student protests right in this spot. There were letters, there were public commentaries, even by law professors saying, no, 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 the University of Minnesota isn't above the law. No, the University of Minnesota needs to follow the law. Then the University of Minnesota made a tragic error. Rather than correcting last fall their violations of law, they decided to double down. They amended the rule and said, oh no, we're not going to use fetal remains from aborted fetuses in Minnesota, but we can buy them from out of state. We can go to California and buy fetal remains and do the transplantation research here. But nothing in the law allows that. That was a circumvention. Here you have the University of Minnesota Medical Center, their research staff, and their lawyers circumventing the law. We can't have a university that has a law school openly and notoriously violating the law. Why is the petition for writ of quo warranto make so much sense? Because by what authority does the University of Minnesota do this? So the University of Minnesota must now respond. Do they continue with their violations of the law and continue this transplantation research? or? Do they fight us in court? And if they choose to fight us in court, that very violation of the law by the University of Minnesota gives the court the jurisdiction to issue the writ. Of course that's how it would work. The people can go to the court and insist that the university follow the law. If the university, in response to the lawsuit, says we'll follow the law, well then the court doesn't have jurisdiction, the writ doesn't need to be issued. When we sued the Secretary of State for going with online voter registration, Prior to having a statute authorizing it, the same thing happened. We sued the Secretary of State in Ramsey County District Court for writ of quo warranto. The Secretary of State insisted he had authority when he did not. And Judge Guthman, who's now the Chief Judge of Ramsey County District Court, issued a writ stopping the Secretary of State from operating illegally. The University of Minnesota stands in no different position. It's not some sort of super agency above the state legislature, above the state law. No, no it's not. It's just like the Secretary of State and has to follow the laws. So we're using the same procedure in Hennepin County District Court and that procedure would involve simply this. The University of Minnesota will have a chance to respond. Then there will be a court hearing and the judge will issue a monumental opinion on the question of whether the University of Minnesota is above the law. And we believe that it is not above the law. In fact, the, really the issue here is the people of Minnesota have already decided that this type of transplantation research on the fetal remorse of aborted fetuses is not right. It's immoral. 
the University of Minnesota decided that, and here the university, I'm sorry, excuse me, the state legislature decided that, and the University of Minnesota has decided otherwise. They choose to violate the law when the people of Minnesota found it important enough to pass a law prohibiting this type of transplantation research. And not only that, not only that, worse than that is the people of Minnesota decided that this kind of transplantation research on fetal remains of an aborted fetus is a crime. The University of Minnesota is violating a criminal statute. What it's doing is a crime. The University of Minnesota is a criminal. When the University of Minnesota acts like a criminal, it's going to affect the University of Minnesota's reputation. The people of Minnesota have spent hundreds of millions of dollars every year to build up the University of Minnesota as one of the great uh, research institutions of this nation. And now it's all being squandered by a research department and by a general counsel's office that doesn't want to follow the law. Now, there are peaceful ways to do this. The peaceful way would be go to the state legislature, make your argument based on the utility of this kind of research, and repeal the law. That's how we do it in a civilized society. In an uncivilized society, the University of Minnesota takes the law in its own hands and acts like a criminal. And we will not accept it as the people of Minnesota for the University of Minnesota to act like a criminal. Now I'd like Brian Gibson to speak, or, or Bridget will speak. Hello, my name is Bridget Busacker. I'm a graduate student at the University of Minnesota. And I'm here today because I'm disappointed by the illegal actions of the University of Minnesota in using fetal tissue and its research. I'm here because I believe that the University of Minnesota is driven by a creative, diverse community, a scientific community of individuals who inspire and pursue knowledge and the pursuit of that knowledge through academia, research, and learning. And I selected the University of Minnesota as an undergraduate and as a graduate student because of the programs, because of its reputation, and because that it strives to further create a diverse community respecting its differences, respecting the marketplace of ideas. Due to its decision, I have a vested interest in the integrity of the research that the University of Minnesota produces, and I'm an advocate for the continuation and the contribution that it creates for further research, but I believe that improvements need to be made and that this illegal action that it's taking needs to be addressed for the reputation and the integrity of its future research. Excellent research should not be done under illegal actions. No student or researcher should want to be a part of illegal actions because it undermines the credibility and the advancements that it can make for discovery, for future advancements, and for future treatments, especially in healthcare and in the medical communities. The replication of studies in research is important, and if the procedure and methods are conducted illegally, it directly impacts the procedures, the methodology, and the future analyses of improved approaches at other universities and in other states. The university is a marketplace of ideas. It's a marketplace for the ability to discuss differences. So regardless of an individual stance on abortion, on the pro-life movement, on the pro-choice movement, and where they believe that their ideas come from and what they produce for their ethical reasoning and their moral reasoning, this is of a legal nature. So for the good of the University of Minnesota, for its students, and for future research, everything that's published here needs to be done legally, especially for the advancements that need to be made for treatments, for solutions, and for continued developments in all fields and all academics. Thank you. And I'm Brian Gibson. I'm the Executive Director of Pro-Life Action Ministries, and uh, I'm here this afternoon uh, because in, in 1987, we found the remains of 13 aborted babies in a trash dumpster behind the abortion facility in Robbinsdale. Uh, subsequently, the state legislature passed uh, the first statewide fetal disposal law in the United States. And the legislature recognized the inherent dignity of the human body even after death in that legislation, that dignity that is there. The University of Minnesota, by violating this law, is desecrating those human bodies and engaging in the commodification of aborted babies. Uh, so we come here and we ask that, uh, that the University of Minnesota start obeying the law. It's that simple. We're not seeking remuneration. We're not seeking any punishment against the University of Minnesota. We are seeking that the judge simply comply them to, to, to follow the law in Minnesota. U of M, obey the law. Thank you.